trouble with coming to these sort of places. You can't get you can't get anywhere quiet. But they're having a good time, that's the main thing. So hi guys and welcome back to the channel. This is my very first vlog from Canada. I've been here three weeks now and um, it's been real busy I'm trying to get um, driver licenses, health cards, car insurance, stuff to kit the house out with, you name it. It's been really, really busy and I'm currently looking after my boy before he starts school and my wife's now working. So it's been quite, um, quite busy for me, but I'm slowly and surely getting back into my photography, which is great and scoping out new areas. And I've got an awful lot of plans um, to do some photography, not only within the city, in the suburbs, but obviously further north and further afield as well. Um, places where um, there aren't an awful lot of people. So all this wheels in motion is all being planned. But for the minute, um, today I'm going to do a, a review on a, on a lens actually from a company called Lauer. Now, Lauer contacted me about doing a review um, on this lens. Now this is a full frame 90 millimeter F2.8 CA Dreamer. And um, it's two times macro. Um, and it's fully manual only. So there are no contacts to the camera. It's all full manual. So going back old school, back in the day when everything was fully manual. Now it doesn't really matter too much for macro photography having the autofocus. Primarily a lot of people do manual anyway. It's also good for portrait and for landscapes as well. Um, and although I've never been massively uh, you know, keen on doing reviews on lenses which are third party lenses, um, I always stick to Canon religiously. Um, but I think it's unfair not to have a go with other manufacturers and I actually did a bit of research when they approached me to see about this lens and the reviews from many renowned, well-renowned photographers have really raved about this lens and some people have even um, got rid of their 100mm EF macro lens and um, used this lens which is a really good price as well. Um, I say it's an aprochromatic lens as well so obviously within that it's a slightly more expensive optical design costs a little bit more money um, and also it allows better color quality and it stops a bit of um, a lot of the fringing and chromatic aberration as well so it's a really really good lens I mean I obviously haven't used it at the moment it's still well and truly in its box I'm going to open it up now and just give you my initial first thoughts on the lens visually how it feels the quality the weight, etc., just to see where we are. And what I'm gonna do after doing this is a very quick open box, is then I'm gonna pick a fine day, gonna go out, hopefully, probably to somewhere rather nice. I'm thinking the Toronto Botanical Gardens. Still a lot of flowers in bloom, lots of insects flying around. Go there with my tripod and do a bit of handheld stuff as well. Obviously there's no image stabilization, there's no weatherproofing, all that sort of stuff. It is belt and braces, a manual lens, but it's got a hell of a good optical quality in it. Um, and that's what we're really after. Um, this is not a, a wildlife photographer's necessarily fast action lens, especially being at 90 millimeters. But we're gonna open it up, have a look and see where we are. How do we get in here? Let's have a look. Fort Knox, obviously. There we go. Very nice quality box there. Here we go. Gotta do the sniff test. It smells very new. Okay, we've got warranty card, quality assurance certificate, a very basic manual in different languages, all for self explanatory, nice. Uh, so look at gel pack there to keep moisture out. And here we go. It's actually got quite a bit of weight to it. So a nice bit of, lovely bit of packaging there. Okay, so here we are. Put that back in there. Wow. So just initially looking at it now. Yep, it's, it's different looking at a, uh, a different manufacturing lens when I only use Canon. Really nice. Um, focus throw on there, it's really nice and steady. Great actually, I would have thought, even if you're doing video in manual, when you're doing your focus in, focus out, bringing stuff in, I'd imagine that's quite nice. It's got a lovely big focus ring there. Um, 
which is really quite a nice movement there. Lovely. As I said before, it's, looking at the contacts there, really nice. Nice and smooth, really well made. Obviously, I said before, there's no weatherproofing on this. It's just literally the bayonet connector there. It feels real heavy in, in the hand. I think this is just about 560 odd grams, I think it weighs. Um, and then you've obviously got there all your adjustments. Uh, so F2.8, F4, F5.6, F8, F11, and F22. Um, really nice, very, just a little click there, just gives you to, knows when you're, knows when you're definitely there. Okay, that's quite nice. Yeah, really like that one. And then you've got then, wow, your distance scale in feet and meters, two times macro, and obviously out to infinity. So it's quite a range there. Nice little uh, lens cap there, very much like the Canon design. Looking at it there, lovely. So this lens is relatively small, obviously the lens doesn't extend out like a zoom. So this is just literally push-pull on the lens. The quality actually is absolutely fantastic. I must admit the design here and the, and the feel of the lens is really, really good quality. Really feels nice. It's got 13 aperture blades there as well. Lovely movement in and out there as you're moving. Yeah, that's lovely. You can see that iris opening there. And it's stopped right down to 22 and then right open to f2.8. That's really, really nice. I've got to, I'm, not, I'm not joking. This, this feels lovely in the hand. It's really, really nice. Nice little blue band around the front there. Gives it a bit of class to it. All in all, first impressions, just picking this lens up. Absolutely lovely. We'll just pop that back on there. You also get a lens hood with it. Obviously standard plastic as they always are, but that's just the way they are. It's got a nice little a bit of roughness inside to catch any dirt. Okay, I'm just going to pop the lens hood on. Just click it on. There we go. Job done. Lovely. Obviously being quite plasticky and the body itself is what you've got there is high quality metal and glass and it you know there is a nice bit of weight there but that's lovely fitting that into an RF body um, I can fit that onto my R7 or my R3 obviously the R7 being a crop sensor I've seen reviews and people using it on the R7 with the crop sensor but obviously on the box FF full frame um, for the R3 would be lovely but uh, it's specifically designed for um, the RF system um, it's got a 67 millimeter thread there and I will get a 67 millimeter protective filter, probably a B&W, I expect, a Nano, um, a very thin one, just to protect the front element. People say, oh, they don't like using it. Why, why put a piece of glass on a, a lens, which has already got great optics? I like it. I like to keep them protected. Macro photography, you're up real close. You get a load of dust and, and bits and bobs in there and dirt and weather. I just want to keep that front uh, bit of glass nice and clean and away from any um, possible scratches or abrasions or anything. But um, there we have it, guys. That is the... Um, the Lauer full frame 90 millimeter f2.8 Dreamer macro times two. And I said there about the times two, so it goes in real close. And apparently, there's very little drop off um, once it goes into um, two times the magnification. But proof in the pudding, guys, we're going to get out and get it used and um, see what it can do. So, hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. As promised today, I've got out on a absolutely cracking day. As you can see behind me, this is the Toronto Botanical Gardens. Beautiful day, very, very bright. And what I'm going to do to test out that Lauer lens, the 90mm f2.8 full frame, apochromatic lens, some subjects, flowers, etc., etc., insects, um, and see how we get on. Lots of challenging situations with the light. Um, unfortunately, my flash unit has now decided to break, so I've got a bit of artificial lighting with me if I need it. But I'm um, going to get cracking, get in there have a look round and see if we can find some great subjects to photograph. Well, already guys, we're uh, into just literally off the car park and there's absolutely tons of beautiful flowers. There's butterflies flying everywhere here. Um, hoping to get a subject which is quite, uh, hopefully quite happy for me to, um, to sit, spend a bit of time with. Um, it's absolutely buzzing. You have to excuse the noise, obviously this is a city area so it's going to be aircraft lots of gardening going on 
some strimmer over there. There's uh, lots of traffic as well. So yeah, you just have to bear with me with that. But at the moment, we've got loads and loads and loads of nice stuff here, especially down there, the yellow flowers, which are Rebecca Goldstrom, which are really, really nice. Great for insects as well. So it's very, very bright, as you can see. Um, so you're going to get a lot of colors getting washed out. Um, losing a bit of that detail as well with the heat haze as well today even at close proximity so um, we're going to do what we can get in nice and close hopefully find some of the shades absolutely baking today um, so we'll um, we'll do what we can we're probably going to do a little bit of landscape type stuff as well um, there's a lot of reviews on youtube at the moment with the lower lens that's been focusing heavily on macro some amateur macro photographers also some professional macro photographers so They've really gone into the nitty gritty of the lens. What I'm going to do today is really do a bit of portrait, a bit of landscape, and hopefully do a little bit of um, macro work as well, just to see what this lens is like. Remember what I said before, this lens is fully manual. There are no contacts on the lens connected to the camera. So the camera I'm using today is, is the Canon R7. Um, I'm going to use that with that crop mode as well, with that 30, just on a 35 megapixel sensor, a bit more than the R3. Um, obviously the R3 being a full frame. But we're going to have a go, get in there, do a bit of um, one times, a bit of two times, and um, see how the lens performs. As we said, it's an apochromatic lens. So that um, reduces like fringing, and also it um, allows that um, chromatic aberration reduction. Um, it's a really, really good lens and a very good in depth of color. A lot of the lower lenses supposedly have lacked that intensity of color, but apparently the apochromatic lenses, as I said before in the initial open boxing, that um, these lenses are rather more expensive. It's got 13 blades, I say it's f2.8 all the way up to f22. Enough talking now, we're gonna get amongst it. There's tons of stuff flying around. It's a little bit of a breeze in the air. That's gonna cause that little bit of um, blur, unfortunately, but uh, we'll see how we'll get on. So guys, now I've just got the uh, camera out, just sat down, got my beanbag rest there, and there's tons of insects flying around my head, and you get some big insects in, uh, in Canada. There's so many flying around now. You have to excuse me today on some of the names of the plants and some of the insect species. Um, I'm still learning whilst I'm here in Canada, so everything at the moment, there's stuff bu buzzing around all over the shop. There's a few butterflies, which are Red Admiral just there, which is lovely to see. So there are some similar species to me back in the, uh, in the UK. So at the moment I'm setting up, at the moment I've got the camera, I'm shooting at ISO 100, I'm shooting at um, F8, which is a really good depth of field for um, a lot of the, um, of the macro species, things like bugs, obviously, um, uh, and the flower species as well, and things like that. And it gives you, allows you to bring that focus in a little bit tighter. Um, um, so I'm having to go with that at the moment. So I'm having to jot down all the settings because at the moment, obviously, that's one small downside self is that because there's no physical electrical contacts to the camera, it's not displaying um, what f-stop I'm currently set at. And also, when I get back onto the computer, it won't register what the lens is and it won't give me technical details of the f-stop. So per picture, I'm going to have to write these settings down or whatever I put it at. So that's one sort of downside to it, really. You do have to remember what settings you put into camera. But basically, as a rule of thumb, f8, ISO sort of as low as possible about 100 and shutter speed just enough to combat any motion there's a little breeze here at the moment and movement of any insects um, and that's where we're at the moment so ISO 100 f8 dialed it in there on the camera so you've got f2.8 f4 f5.6 f8 f11 f16 and f22 now we don't really want to push it to up to f11 and more obviously you start to um, introduce a lot of chromatic aberration there and things like that into the into the lens so i think you push it to about f11 i think it's probably about the maximum but today i'll be shooting um on varying settings probably between f um, 2.8 up to f11.
just round this corner. Let's get the light away. Let me go around here. Wow, they are absolutely lovely. Wow, such big butterflies, they really are. Beautiful. Oof. There's two of them now, they're chasing each other around here. Fantastic. So far guys, it's um, proving quite tricky. Um, I'm really out of touch with um, using the manual focus on a lens. A um, bit with video, but with subjects like, um, we've got some swallowtail butterflies here, which are absolutely fantastic, but they are quite skittish and they're taking off quite quickly. Did a little bit of video there in 4K60, hopefully that's come out okay. But I am finding it quite difficult, to be honest, focusing in manual. Just getting that training, that focus throw on it though is amazing. It's really, really nice as you go through the focus mode there. It's very easy. Um, I've got um, a focus peaking set as well, which just gives you an overlay of color. Um, it allows you to highlight high contrast, low contrast areas on an image and also in manual focus to give you that idea when you've got that um, subject fully in focus, you get that overlay for the focus peaking. Don't really use that that often to be fair, but obviously if using it today with the manual, um, it's very hard with the back screen, even looking through the viewfinder sometimes to get that um, depth of color and sharpness there. Also today, as I said, my sadly, my flash is, um, is, is kaput since I've um, arrived in Canada, I've not used it. Put it on today, did a few test shots, it's not working. So um, having to make do with what I got today, it's probably gonna stick to a little bit more, um, some distance shots, probably F2.8, maybe F8, just doing some nice pictures of barks on trees, things like that. So the images aren't gonna be amazing. Um, and I'm not a macro photographer, as many of you know, watching my vlogs, I don't think I've done ever done a macro uh, video before. Um, it isn't my thing generally, but it is nice to do something different. Um, and you know, at the moment using this R7 in manual mode is tricky. Um, you know, even with the, uh, some of the, the flowers there with the wind movement, having to push that shutter speed up um, and that ISO then lifts as well. Got a load of school kids going past at the moment. Looks like they're having a lovely day out. But yeah, so, so far, quite testing. Um, but as the lens goes, whatever I do today and whatever results I get, this lens can deliver in the right hands. Um, and, and with use over time, my skills will develop with this and the subjects to gain some really good macro shots, hopefully all being well. But um, gonna get back to it now, move to another location and see what we got. Just getting a bit distracted there, just been taking pictures of the insects and butterflies, but we just had a hummingbird in which I thought was like a hawk moth it's about the size of your thumb um, so obviously trying to get it with a manual focus lens is a bit of a nightmare I just got some pictures of these lovely ladies here who are in a traditional Ethiopian dress just allowed me to take a few pictures there um, with the new Lauer lens just nice and close up on the face um, and some of the dress as well so it's really kind of them to allow me to do that um, so yeah a bit of a distracting subject there but quite nice and uh, at the end of the day, you know, something I don't do very often is uh, portraits of people, which is not really my bag, but you know, you can't pass up an opportunity to take a picture of some lovely ladies. So uh, yeah, happy days, but um, gonna move on in a minute, find somewhere else, and then see if we can get some pictures of something a bit different. So just down by the river now, just doing a little bit of a uh, test with the video capabilities at slow-mo and um, also with a bit of 4K60, just to check the focus, just how it flows. Focus method and the focus throw is really, really nice. You can get that nice blurred in and out shot when you're doing some um, video, especially for subjects that aren't moving too fast, but it's not too long. You're not hunting for ages to get focus. So that's really, really quite nice. Another good addition to the, to the lens itself. Um, so far, really impressed. You know, it's so contrasty, so bright. Colors are getting, oh, we've got some um, Northern Cardinal, female, just up in the tree there. And oh, it's three, it's one female and two juveniles. Not gonna be able to get a very good picture of them. Excuse the, uh, large passenger airliner going over but yeah really so i'm just trying a little bit of video out just see what that's like um and uh, a couple of little shots of the river itself it's very washed out a lot of harshness on the stone there but all in all 
got to go with what you've got and um, we'll see when we get back. So guys, just focusing on this flower here, really quite nice, got nice and close, just over 21 centimetres away, um, get a nice lot of insects landing on, um, picking up some quite nice shots there, which is really quite nice. Um, it, as I said, that light is getting thrown right down on top of that flower, really, really overexposing that image. I can't go any lower on the ISO, um, but still, you know, got to work with what you've got at the end of the day. Um, and it'd be really interesting when we get back and look on the computer. I'm then varying the settings then from f2.8 up to f11. Haven't really pushed it any further than that. Um, I'm hoping we've got some uh, some good detailed shots in there somewhere. Um, but it is difficult, you know. But it's great just to be out and having a go. And it's nice to go back to like the old days. I used to shoot with a Canon T70, Canon T90, um, and that was manual focus for wildlife photography. Um, and it was tricky, and the shots were pretty bad. But at the end of the day, um, it's nice to go back, lose your, sort of learn your craft a little bit again with the, with the focusing. And that'll help me as well when I'm doing um, long lens work, manual focus. Um, you know, I've got um, the power focus mode as well on, on some of my lenses as well, which enable you to do a bit more um, softer in and out focus with, with video. But um, yeah, it's baking. Been here about two hours now. Um, just going to mooch around a little bit more, um, see if we can find some more subjects and um, maybe some butterflies if I can. The insects aren't really staying still for very long. The heat of the day, it's not early morning when they're quite docile and they stay for longer, pumping that blood around and then getting their energy levels up when they obviously start to feed. So early morning's pretty, pretty good time for it, but sadly I can't really get out there and do it early morning at the moment. So guys, that pretty much concludes my vlog for today. Um, testing the Lauer 90mm f2.8 fully manual lens. I've really enjoyed today. I'm not sure what the images are like. It's been really harsh light um, and I've managed to get some insects and butterflies, um, some fungus, tree bark, you name it. It's been nice to test it out. It's been a bit tricky for me to get to grips with manual focus again. You know, when you're just testing yourself, getting it in and out, especially with insects moving, butterflies moving, quite harsh light. It has been quite difficult. But um, yeah, I've got a few, few of the pros and cons then of the lens. Pros, optical quality is absolutely amazing. The apochromatic part of the, of the lens itself, you know, it really details that um, nice colour and the fringing obviously is reduced and the chromatic aberration as well. So, you know, a really, really nice lens. Well built, metal, top quality glass. You know, it really is fantastic. As a comparison there, here is obviously the Lauer lens there. And here is Canon 100mm f2.8 LIS. Um, lens, which is a great, um, great lens. Weather sealing, you name it, it's great. It rattles, this one doesn't. That really annoys me with the lens hood, that really does rattle away. Obviously quite a different lens there, that's one to one magnification and this is two times. Um, it's been really, really good and I've really enjoyed it and I can't wait to see what the images are like when I get back on the computer. Um, you know, as I said, there are pros and cons to this lens, um, um, but there's certainly more um, pros than there are cons to this lens really and it's I would recommend um, buying it if you're in the market for a new macro lens landscape lens or, or a portrait lens as I said guys as well if you do want to purchase this lens I've got a 5% discount code which is in my vlog description which you can then click the link go and buy the lens from there if you want to if not just go to our website and buy it from there you know I do get a slight commission from from the lens but uh, it has been a pleasure guys as always I would never do a review on a lens that I didn't think is decent enough. I did a lot of research before I accepted this lens with Lauer. I never do a, a vlog on something that I don't think would work. And, you know, I've read the reviews and watched some YouTube videos on this lens, and it really does deliver the goods. It is difficult with the manual side of things, but you know, the slow pace of macro as well is, is quite nice. It's nice, easy photography, fast moving subjects, wildlife, etc. Yes, a little bit difficult, but, I found that focus peaking today that I use with this 
brilliant to highlight any low and con low and high contrast areas and obviously allowing you then to focus that much better but uh, my thanks very much to Laua for allowing me to do a review on this lens today it's been fantastic and um, I hope you enjoyed that guys there's loads and loads coming from me um, I've got plans to head up north etc um, do lots of wildlife photography out on my own in the wilds at the moment obviously being here in this busy place it is um, obviously quite difficult um, you know people walking around noise of aircraft cars etc you know it is um, a bit of an issue but hey you know I like to do things different from time to time but uh, it's been absolutely fantastic here at the Botanical Gardens the light's been lovely a bit harsh a bit contrasty and very hot but um, yeah it's been really enjoyable and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it guys and uh, for those that don't subscribe and um, may think about subscribing to the channel please do um, and click that bell to be notified of any new videos coming out but uh, from me as always guys thanks for watching and I'll see you next time